Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to provide an overview of conditional probability. And a rough outline here is we'll talk about the definitions of conditional probability, look at examples, show how it could be converted to a multiplication rule, and finally explain how conditional probability can help us determine if two events are independent. So the main idea of conditional probability is suppose we have two sets A and B and the probability of B is positive. Then we define the conditional probability of A given B denoted like this, A vertical slash B, to be equal to the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. Now, I like to think of this as, in a sense, reducing the sample space. Instead of S, the sample space is now B. And we look at sort of the, the piece of A that's in B. Okay, so one way to think of this in terms of this Venn diagram, let's say I have these two sets, A and B. And if we want the probability of A given B, we look at the intersection, which has 2 in here, and divide by the probability of B, so area is 2 plus 3. So it might be best to think of this in terms of areas. I look at the area that represents the intersection divided by the area that gives you all of B. So we might get something like this. And in the end, if we think of these as elements, then we get 2 over 5, right? Everybody see uh, the sum of B considered is 5. And then we have 2 over 5. OK, another way to see this is in terms of a contingency table. So suppose we wanted to find the probability that a male is chosen given they pass. And let me back up just one second. Let's say that we have this uh, set of 200 people. We know there's a breakdown between males and females, those that pass and those that fail. Now suppose one person is chosen at random. We want to know the probability the chosen, the person chosen is a male, given that they passed. So we're restricting our sample space now to those who pass. And we figure out the probability of the males that pass. That would be 46 over 200. Divide by the probability that a person passes. 114 over 200, get a final answer of 46 over 114. But notice this is different from the probability that a person passes given that they're male. Okay. Now in this second case, the sample space is restricted to males. So we could think of this row. So we find this conditional probability. We look at the intersection of passing and male. Same number that we got in the first example. We get 46 over 200. But now our denominator is different. It's 102 over 200. So we could simplify the fraction. And we get 46 over 102. So at this point, let me ask you to stop the video, try to find the probability that a person fails given their female, the probability that a person fails given that they are male. OK, another item that we get out of the definition of conditional probability is that we get a certain multiplication rule that is useful 
when A and B are dependent. Okay? So remember, when A and B are independent, the probability of A intersect B is just the probability of A times the probability of B. But now we have a difference because A and B are dependent. We have this probability of A intersect B, the probability of A given B times the probability of B. And notice this could easily be flipped around. We could have the probability of B given A times the probability of A. So this gives us a method for finding the probability of an intersection. But A and B are either dependent, or sometimes you might see this by saying that there's no replacement, depending on the type of question you're looking at. So here's an example. Let's suppose in a scientific study, there are eight guinea pigs, five of which are pregnant. If two are selected without replacement, find the probability that they are pregnant. Okay. In other words, that the, the two are both pregnant. So let's let A be the event the first pig selected is pregnant, and B the event the second pig is pregnant. We want to find probability of A intersect B. So we can express this as the probability of A times the probability of B given A. All right, the probability of A. So on the first choice, what's the probability of selecting a pregnant pig? It's 5 over 8. Okay, but now assume there's no replacement. What's the probability on the second selection you select a pregnant pig given that the first one selected is pregnant? So here you could see that there's only four pregnant pigs left out of the seven that are left. So I get four sevenths. So you could see that our probability in this case uh, reduces to five over 14. We could easily extend this idea. Let's say we now wanted to select three pigs and we ask the question, what's the probability they're all pregnant? So now the probability is obtained by multiplying the fractions five eighths, four sevenths, and three sixths. And you can see after a little bit of, of canceling and then multiplying this out, our final answer is five over 28. And finally, we mentioned that conditional probability can also be used to determine if two events are independent. The main idea is assuming the probability of B is positive, A and B are independent, if and only if the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B. So here, we just note that the occurrence of B has no effect on the probability of A. So these ideas are all very important and will be used really throughout the course. We mentioned some of the basics here. You'll see some extensions of this in both the class notes and the textbook. So this completes the overview. I hope you've enjoyed it.